Hey guys, this is Rick. Last week I promised to get more into community building. And I can tell with certainty right now that there are toxic people, predatory people, trying to get a foothold in the Bitcoin Cash community. I say that with certainty not because that I've identified them or know who they are. I say that with certainty because I've been in so many communities before, seen this pattern so many times before, that I want to share my tools for discovering these people before they can do damage. I'm going to argue that the Bitcoin Cash community did not learn from splitting off from the previous toxic community. We did not learn to identify these people. And you'll see that the tips I have will apply a lot to the Bitcoin BTC community. And hopefully these tips and tricks of my toolbox will help all of us foster a more healthy community going forward. So this is going to be a much more generalized presentation about toxic people in communities because there is such a thing not everybody in a community is a positive contributor some people are joining communities because they have a predatory nature and are seeking something else entirely than what most people would expect and i'm sad to say but the way i see it the bitcoin cash community learned absolutely nothing from the Blockstream debacle, except having identified a few toxic people far too late into the game when they had already taken over the community. The game is to identify them before they take over the community, obviously. And right now, right now, there are toxic people gaining influence. I don't know who they are. I don't have names. But I can tell this based on experience. And they are joining these communities again. I'm almost 50. I've seen communities come and go. The patterns are always the same. The patterns are always the same. So I'm going to share some of this experience. If you're interested in reading more about it, I'm bringing some of this up in my book Swarmwise, which you can get for free just by, just by searching for this name. And I'm talking a little bit more about how to deal with this kind of people, because there are a few different ones. But let's look at the big picture. Let's look at the big pattern here. Because in general, you have three types of people in the community. You have the excellent, the good, and the toxic. The toxic are very few, but they do tons of damage. The excellent are also quite few. Most people are in their middle category. The absolutely outstanding contributors, you can tell that they are, that because they are talking about what they have already done. Hey, I did this, it works great. They accept collaborators and praise them openly. They never seek the spotlight. In fact, they avoid it. If they're brought on stage, it's very reluctantly because they are busy improving the world. And they talk of results. They talk of this already happened. This is typical for an excellent contributor. A good contributor is similar, but not quite to this degree. A good contributor are talking about not so much as I have already done this, but I am doing this right now. I am doing this right now. They seek and build a community where they are just one part. They are, very, they are persistent in, in emphasizing how everybody is standing shoulder to shoulder in the community to create a whole. They're using a spotlight when invited on stage and similar to reinforce these messages, how we're one big community. And they talk of data. Facts say this, 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 and this. 
you can see how this is similar to the people I'm talking about as excellent where the excellent people just basically come out of a closet and say oh I solved this problem for you the good contributors are more talking to each other on a daily basis these are good contributors and I'm, I'm not saying good in the okay sense I'm saying good in an 80 to 85 percent out of a hundred possible score sense and then there's the non-contributors the toxic the damaging people they are will be talking non-stop about what they will accomplish not on what they're doing right now not on what they have done but what they will have accomplished in the future in particular this thing that they will have accomplished will is designed to outshine what the good and excellent contributors have already done there'll be a oh that's nothing look at what we'll be presenting image they're not building a community they're building a following they're building a cult around themselves and they're beating their own drum constantly saying how good they are how good they are how great their product will be how good they are personally and they don't talk of what they've done they don't talk of what the data is they are talking very much about status rank competition because they see the entire life as a ladder with them somewhere on it and they are always striving to be on top which in their world requires stomping on everybody else frankly and that uh, and I'll get back to this but if you want one key takeaway here the best contributors talk of the past good contributors talk of the present the toxic non-contributors talk non-stop about the future it's important to realize that these people don't have the same reward mechanisms as we do they are acting in a predatory manner they are not out for collaboration they are act, they are essentially predators they are offering supernatural stimuli and when I say supernatural, I'm not talking about go ghosts and paranormal things. I'm talking about supernatural stimuli in the sense that you're feeling something extraordinary, something above the natural. Essentially, they make you feel that you're on drugs in a good way. And these people are lying to a degree you are not able to empathize with you cannot foresee what these people will do next I'm going to give you one example here and this was a woman I had in a community it's relevant that it was a that it was a woman because she got involved with a doctor got romantically involved with a doctor at, who was working at a hospital she they had sex at this hospital somehow she convinced this doctor to transfer money to her account made up a story of needing money or whatever and then immediately went to the press about saying how she was a sex worker and that this doctor had bought sexual services from her and had sex at the hospital for money because the reward mechanism of this particular psychopath sociopath toxic individual predator was exposure attention and she was willing to burn any bridges build up any story to get one moment of attention in media you would not think somebody capable of hurting an individual to this degree because of course the doctor was fired and their career shattered only for having been friendly you cannot 
play against these people. You, these people cannot be outsmarted. They cannot be outsmarted. The only winning move, the only winning move is not to play at all. Here's a couple of key red flags. Key red flags, in addition to this past, uh, past, present and future thing I've already talked about. You'll, these people will behave as though they know everybody and everyone, and op doors are opening everywhere for them, effortlessly. This is because they have this following that just reinforces itself all the time, and nobody really knows them beneath the surface. They just know that they know everybody. And so once you're bringing into this, being brought into this circle, you're getting this supernatural stimuli. You feel like you're on drugs. You feel like you'll be, you've been elevated five rungs on the social ladder overnight. It's all a facade. Because rules don't really apply to these people. They don't need to work for things. When they're challenged on whether something really, where was this you promised me, they're going to make up an excuse for it. And the excuse is going to sound completely credible. And the rules don't apply at no point. So this is where you're starting to ask, how do you really check this then? As in, th these are very soft issues. Do you have any hard, is hard issues? Do you have any tangible things we can go on. And yes, I do. Their credentials will never check out. They will throw credentials around lavishly. I have this degree, I have worked here, I did this, blah, 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 blah. It does not check out. It will not check out. And as for academic degrees, remember, a university is always proud of a degree it awarded, because it means the university succeeded about something. A university will advertise the degrees it has handed out. A university does never forget a degree it handed out at any level. Somebody who claims they hold a degree in any subject, at any level, where the university asserts that this is not true, or where the university cannot be verified, is an immediate and permanent red flag. Because this particular lie is always deliberate. I cannot reinforce this enough. This particular lie is always deliberate. And it must permanently disqualify somebody in your mind. The red flag must be there immediately and stick. Because the, this is again about rank. This is about status. This is about following. This is about getting the initial credibility. If a claimed degree does not check out, this person is toxic. This person is toxic. Do not accept any excuses for this under any circumstance. There are some nuances. There are some nuances. For example, there is a relevance of the particular field of the degree. There is also something called honorary do doctorates, where the a university would allow you to forego the normal academic process and is awarding you with a certain title for work achieved completely on your own. But normally they discourage a holder of an honorary degree from using it as though it was earned academically. There are exceptions. There are exceptions. One of them, for example, would be Dr. Richard Stallman, who uses his doctor's title because he has 13 of them, all awarded for liberty work in free software. So, in free software contexts, Dr. Richard Stallman has asserted, and I would say clar clarified, set the template that this is acceptable. 
This does not necessarily translate if you have a degree in the wrong field entirely. And as an example, I would say I would use somebody called Dr. Alban. Dr. Alban is a musician, does, isn't very active anymore, I think. Haven't heard about them in a while. A Swedish musician. And when you're starting to look at what academic credentials th this person has, it turns out that they don't have a PhD at all, but they are dentist. They are dentist. That's where the doctor comes from. A doctor for a dentist is valid only in a dentist's office. It is not valid outside of a dentist's office. And while you might argue that there's some creative license for a musician to use a dentist's doctor term, or even if you don't have a doctor's term at all, just to be funny, this illustrates how important the field is. You are the doctor in a dentist's office if you are the dentist. You're not the doctor at a musician's, uh, l at the London Sym Symphony Orchestra analysis if you are a dentist. So you can see that these toxic people will typically be flaunting degrees as part of their key identity. They'll not be hidden away, they'll not be mentioned somewhere in passing. They'll typically be very visibly flaunted. And this is, if we're in the Bitcoin Cash community, this field should, th these fields should be in computer sciences, mathematics, applied cryptology, something that is relevant to, to this field. If on looking deeper on, on one of these people, it, it turned out that, that the degree is two decades old and it was in something different entirely, like medieval plumbing, Greek poetry, Catholicism, then they're the dentist outside of their dentist's office and they're not a doctor there. They're not a master of sciences, they're not a bachelor, they're not whatever level they claim. And this is, this is a very, very common and very clear red and immediate red flag. And so you have, but, 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 but all these known people are following this person already. Surely, no. This is the modus operandi, getting people to follow, creating a following that lift this person to the skies and say they're incredible. Remember how this happened with Greg Maxwell at Blockstream, the ex-CTO at Blockstream, who everybody claimed was the expert cryptographer because everybody claimed he was the expert cryptographer. Circular reasoning at its finest. This is the pattern that's being created. So if your red flags are going off and your instinct is that your red flags must be wrong because you see so many known people around this person eggs, that is not mitigating your red flags. That is another red flag reinforcing the ones you already have. Trust your gut. Trust your judgment. Your judgment is typically not wrong, especially not when you just have this knowing feeling that something is not right here. Whenever you have that knowing feeling, for any reason, start scratching the surface of credentials and see if they hold up. Odds are they will not. Odds are they will not. And then you know what you'll be dealing with. Because these people will already be in the Bitcoin Cash community. They'll already be in any startup community. They'll be focusing on following, on status, on d making wild promises, seeking the spotlight. They'll seek the rock star facade. Facade. And they're rock stars because their followers say they are. The circular reasoning again. As opposed to what we saw from regular contributors. Work, 
I did this or I'm doing this right now. Results, we have, we're seeing this. I produced running code. I produced running code. I built community around running code. It's important to realize that predators like this are attracted to successful communities. They are attracted to successful communities, especially nascent ones. Because there's fewer people in them, so it's easier to get the spotlight to you. And people like this are trying to get the status they seek right now in the Bitcoin Cash community. I don't know who they are. I don't have any names. Even if I had, I would not give you any names. But I am sharing my experience that this is how you can identify them. You do not try to play their game. You cannot win. You cannot outsmart them. The only way to win is not to play their game.